what would have happened? You know, you got Kanye West, insane, makes good music. He wants to also kill uh, Pete Davidson, and uh, he's mad at Taylor Swift every other week. And then you got you got uh, Michael Jackson, did horrible things to children, but Thriller, it's we're here every time we play his music. We're like yeah, yeah, don't post about it. And then and then it makes you wonder, like, what if Hitler stayed in art school? It does, doesn't it? A little bit. You're like, what if Hitler got accepted? into art school and didn't have his dreams crushed and take all this psycho negative energy to where he took it. Imagine if he just stayed here. Imagine if even after he uh, didn't make it into art school, he didn't quit. He's like, I don't need to go to art school then. I'm going to make it on my own. That was the difference between Kanye West and Hitler. Kanye West got shut down at the record company when he was trying to play the first tracks for college dropout, but he didn't quit. He kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Hitler Got a no thank you from art school, and he's like, I'm gonna kill a lot of people. This week in Zoltan. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Welcome to This Week in Zoltan. This is episode 331, I think. I'm pretty sure. It doesn't matter. Uh, welcome. Thank you for tuning in, listening, downloading, streaming, whatever you do to listen to this show. Uh,. I had a wonderful weekend. I had a wonderful weekend at the Comedy Store here in La Jolla. Probably the best stage in all of San Diego. It's exactly what a comedy club should be. Low ceilings, walls painted black, uncomfortable seats, no food, uh, just popcorn. It's exactly what comedy club should be. And I got to work it with one of the, one of the biggest comedians today, uh, uh, Mark Normand. He sold out eight shows which is incredible. This is probably the last time he's gonna be working at the uh, at the comedy store. He'll probably be back in a theater, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, two shows Thursday, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. He ended up having to cancel the Sunday shows. He had a bit of a skiing trip or something in Utah. Uh, but it was amazing. It was great to work with him. Uh, it's cool to see what you can become in comedy. Like, that's what it is. He put out his own special on YouTube. Netflix finally came around and uh, and gave him, you know, like a half hour special, which he should have had long ago. And and now tickets are moving between his YouTube push and Netflix all working together. He's selling tickets like a mug. Is that the term? Am I too old to say that? I think I've already said it. I can't take it back now. Speaking of selling tickets, let me tell you where I'm going to be coming up uh, later this month, the 24th. I'm in Portland at the Siren Theater. The 25th, I'm at Everett, Washington at the historic Everett Theater, which is halfway sold out. I think it seats like 800 people or something, or 1,100, and we've already sold half of it. So what's that? Four or six, four or 500 tickets? It's awesome. Let's sell it out. If you're in the Pacific Northwest, come to Everett, Washington. And then after that, I'm in Chehalis, Washington. Uh, my buddy Gabe is putting on that show. It's in the Central Coast. Come check that out. Uh, Charlotte, the first night is sold out. April 2nd, tickets still available. And then April 3rd, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, the Comedy Cabana. Tickets just went on sale for that. Let's sell out Myrtle Beach. Uh, let's have some money in my pocket so I can go to Doc Antle's Animal Sex Slave Convention Zoo that he runs over there. You know? <laughs> Let me go enjoy myself. Other than that, I have uh, dates coming up in Washington, D.C. I'm working on Philadelphia. I'm working on Denver. And uh, definitely a lot more. Go to my website, ZoltanComedy.com. Scroll down to the bottom, sign up for my email list. And then you can, you know, I'll email you. I'll let you know when I'm near you instead of you having to pay attention to me. Uh, anyway, awesome weekend at the comedy store. Worked out some new jokes. They started working. That bike lane thing. That's been the that's been the fun part of doing this podcast and then putting it up on YouTube and seeing the difference. The first one that I put up for the full episode was uh, bike lanes are turning me Republican, and a, lot, a good amount of people watched it. Uh, overall, lost me eight eight subscribers, which is you know what that let me know. That let me know that when I'm posting something like this in this medium, like not when I'm on stage when there's people chuckling at what I'm saying, but when I post stuff in a situation where I'm just surrounded by plants and there's no ha ha ha, I think sometimes people think I'm serious. And I'm joking, all right? I'm joking, there's like truth in what I'm saying. I'm joking, 
It's comedy. I'm not being serious. Although, if you did think I was being serious, I would rather you unsubscribe. I think that's for the best. I don't need a bunch of literals following me. My stuff is very, uh, it's not that nuanced. It's pretty straight down the middle comedy, but I guess if it confuses you, it's best, it's best you find someone else, I, I guess. I don't know. Uh, so that's been the fun part of like putting it out there. Just seeing the response to it. Seeing the response to like, when you don't see me performing it in front of a crowd and hearing laughs and not knowing that you're like, is he joking? Is he serious? Is he reading his manifesto? What's happening right now? Uh, it's been, it's been an interesting way to go. But, uh, but today's a happy day. Today I'm recording this on March 8th, 2022. It's my name day. Yeah, apparently, I do, I'm still new to this holiday. I didn't even know this existed, but in Hungarian culture, and I think in other cultures as well, possibly, perhaps, probably, uh, there's name days, and it's, it's, it's almost as special as someone's birthday. So I googled it to make sure, but yeah, name day in Hungary, like your birthday is kind of a personal thing. You celebrate that with friends and family. And then your name day is like a, everyone celebrates everyone named whatever your stupid name is. And for Zoltan, name day is March 8th. So I'm soaking in name day. I wanted to post about it, but it's also International Women's Day, which what a damn it. I would look like such a chauvinist pig for, <laughs> for promoting my name day. Like, hell yeah, it's name day, everybody. It's Zoltan. Like, look at this guy. He won't even let the women have a day. Will you let the women have a day? Uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's my lovely name day. What a weird holiday. What a what a dumb holiday. D to be honest with you, not knocking the Hungarian culture. Those are my people. It's cool, but that's weird. Cause there's more. There has to be more than three hundred sixty-five names in the Hungarian. Someone's left out. Someone's left out. What if Kanye West kids were Hungarian? They don't have a name day. They don't have directional names in Hungarian culture. They would just be completely left out. Uh, just sold two more tickets for Portland. Hell yes. Thank you very much. Um, that's what I fixate on. I fixate on ticket sales and content viewership. Uh, that's, that's what I do. Uh, I don't know. Couple things. Name day I've been pumped about. This past weekend at the Comedy Store was amazing. Magical. Exactly how it should be. Uh, I get to do, you know who's upsetting me recently are the vegans, which I usually, I'm, I come from the school of thought of live your life and be happy, whatever angle in which you live it in, live it to its fullest, and just smile as much as you can, because we're all going to die, uh, and it feels soon, doesn't it feel soon, like sooner than it should, after all the news and you just watch on social media, it's either like Ukraine, or the virus I guess is over now, it feels like it's over. It feels like it's coming up. I feel like we just hit the two and a half hour mark of a Martin Scorsese movie and then you just think to yourself, like, it has to be over soon, right? We've been here for two and a half hours. It just feels like we're getting to a point where we don't have to try anymore. And, uh, and that brings me relief. And that's also why I feel like everyone should live their lives. Live your lives however you deem it necessary. As long as you're not impeding onto other people's lives. And that brings me to my next point. We went grocery shopping. We went over to Sprouts. And we wanted to get some shredded cheese. Because we're going to make some sweet tacos. We wanted to put some nice little shredded cheese. So we bought this packet of shredded cheese. It's from Follow Your Heart. It's been around since the 1970s. In big bold print. It says mozzarella. Mozzarella is what it says. And in very small print, under it, it says vegan. And in even smaller print above mozzarella, it says dairy-free cheese. They sold me fake cheese. They sold me fake. Stop trying to convert me. I feel like you're lying to me. Who was that cheese for? Vegans want to buy that cheese. People that don't want to eat dairy want to buy that cheese. You're not going to convert me. You think that's how you're gonna get me? Thinking that I bought real mozzarella? You think I'm not gonna notice that I'm sprinkling shredded yoga mat pieces onto my taco? You think I'm not gonna notice that it's not melting? You think it's not gonna cross my mind going, this tastes off. This tastes like corrugated styrofoam 
but edible somehow, and you don't think I'm gonna look at the packaging? And do you think when I look at the packaging and I read vegan and dairy-free, I'm gonna be like, oh, oh, I guess I am a better person now. I guess this is what I'll buy. No, I feel lied to. Lied to, just like in high school. You know what that reminded me of? That reminded me of when I used to play football in high school. No, I wasn't good. Uh, I played tight end. Yes, I was too small for that position. That's all besides the point. But they had this thing called the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, uh, which, once again, I had no issues with Christians or athletes or Christian athletes. Uh, but I remember the quarterback came into the locker room after practice one day, and he's like, hey, there's pizza outside. If, uh, if you guys want some pizza, he invited everybody. And I was like, hell yeah, I'll be there. And then I showed up, and I noticed the whole team wasn't there. And I was very suspicious because I'm like, these are all 16-year-old boys. Who the hell is turning down free pizza? And then I realized what I had agreed to as soon as I took that first bite of pizza. They're like, well, let's talk about the Lord. That's what this feels like. That's what this fake, vegan, mozzarella, yoga mat strips that you sold me bleached white feels like. It feels like I was just lied to by my quarterback. Just give me regular cheese. Let me decide when I'm ready to try vegan cheese. Don't just do make it. Don't just make me do it. Let me decide. You guys are being real, like, like the talking heads on the major news. You guys are being very, uh, Cooper, what's his name, Anderson Cooper and, uh, Tucker Carlson about it. You can't just tell me the news, you also have to tell me how I feel about it. Just give me the cheese. I don't know if that last, uh, <laughs> I don't know if that last comparison made total sense, but I already said it, and there's no take two on this podcast. So I'm pretty upset with the vegans today. Not all the vegans, just... Follow your heart. Hey, hey, follow your heart. How about you follow your heart and learn honesty? You gotta make it big. You know, you know what needs to, the whole thing needs to say this is not real cheese. Fake ass cheese is what it should say. Big bold print, and then in small print, mozzarella. Big bold print, vegan, fake ass cheese, small print, pretending to be mozzarella. You lied to me. And yes, this bag is half full because we've been trying to enjoy it. That's the worst part. I don't even feel, I feel embarrassed to return it and I don't want to throw it away because it's food kind of. So we've been taking nips of it here and there. We've been trying to melt it down, which it needs to be as hot as tea water to melt down this godforsaken fake ass cheese. Uh, quit lying, man. Just say who you are. Just say you're selling vegan cheese. How much money could you be making? Because now I'm going to remember every time I see the packages, I'm going to go, that's not real. It's not like I'm going to make the mistake and buy it again. You already got me. You got me once. You got me for $6 or 7 Who knows? Inflation. I don't know, like, Emma, my lovely fiance who puts up with my craziness, she's like, you're very odd because you get mad at the small things like being tricked into buy vegan cheese, but big things don't really bother you that much. And I, I think that's so true. That is so damn true, especially when it comes to me. I'm like, if, if a million small things, because I feel like the small things are what keep you, keep your day normal, all the small things. All of them, whatever they may be, they keep your day moving forward. And the big things are just giant dodgeballs, and you gotta slip them and dodge them and roll them and duck them and pull and yada yada. And that I feel like I can deal with more than uh, being sold fake ass cheese. I I don't know. I'm 35. I'm not 35 yet. 35 in May. This is who I'm becoming. Can you imagine me at 55? This is why the world needs to end. Is the world can't handle me at 55 years old. It's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Look at Kanye West. Do you like that transition? That's the next topic I'm, I'm watching. Are you watching the Netflix thing on Kanye West? I've, I started watching it. I'm, I st I'm on episode two. I'm like 30 minutes in episode two. I don't want to give any spoilers, but I'm going to tell you what I saw. You know his career. He made it. Okay? He made it. He's doing great. He's struggling right now. He's still making good music, but he's arguing with a, with a comedian, because comedians with his wife, his ex-wife, it's rough. Kanye is, uh, he's insane. 
but he's so creative. That's why he's good. You know, that's what I've, I've really learned from this documentary that I've watched so far. He grew up with an amazing mother, Donda. If, if you watch this documentary, the one thing you will definitely come away with is how amazing Donda West is. Like, I totally get why he's named two albums after her, why one of the tracks on one of the albums is just him just chanting his mother's name, which is creepy and culty, but when you realize how amazing Donda West is, you're like, I get, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense to me. Uh, but yeah, Kanye West is a lunatic. And he has to be. That's why his music is so good. Because he's so driven and he has a psychotic energy focused towards making really good music. And he does. Every, I think all great artists, like the really, really great ones, the upper echelon top shelf artists are lunatics. That's why they're good at that. Because they're able to just focus in and work on only that and put all their energy into it. I mean, they had that scene in the first episode of the Kanye West documentary, where he's making beats for people at Rockefeller. Rockefeller. Sorry. I'm white. Uh, not Rockefeller. Rockefeller. Uh, and he wants to be recognized as a rapper, so he makes all these songs, and he just goes into the office and he starts playing them for all the people at the record company, and these are songs that are going to be big hits on his debut album. Nobody cares. Nobody even... They were annoyed that he showed up to play this music in front of them. They were upset and he didn't quit. He kept pushing and pushing and pushing and he made it. Why? Because he's insane. And he was given an incredibly sweet mother that said you can do anything in the world. And it just makes you wonder, like all great artists are insane. Look at Michael Jackson. He made great music, also a pedophile, you know? I'm sure Elvis, he made okay, nah, maybe not Elvis, but it makes you wonder, like, what would have happened? What would have happened? You know, you got Kanye West, insane, makes good music. He wants to also kill uh, Pete Davidson, and uh, he's mad at Taylor Swift every other week. And then you got, you got uh, Michael Jackson, did horrible things to children, but Thriller, it's, we're here. Every time we play his music, we're like, yeah, yeah, don't post about it. And then, and then it makes you wonder, like, what if Hitler stayed in art school? It does, doesn't it? A little bit. You're like, what if Hitler got accepted into art school and didn't have his dreams crushed and take all this psycho negative energy to where he took it? Imagine if he just stayed here. Imagine if even after he uh, didn't make it into art school, he didn't quit. He's like, I don't need to go to art school then. I'm going to make it on my own. That was the difference between Kanye West and Hitler. Kanye West got shut down at the record company when he was trying to play the first tracks for College Dropout. But he didn't quit. He kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Hitler got a no thank you from art school. And he's like, I'm going to kill a lot of people. And that could have easily been because it's the same energy. It's the same energy. I really think if Hitler would have made it in art school, he probably could have been the next Picasso. And I know his art was mediocre, but what if he just kept working at it, you know? I'm sure Kanye West's first beat wasn't Jesus Walks. I'm sure his first beat wasn't the best thing ever created. Maybe Hitler could have worked himself up into a Picasso level artist and we would have to use Mussolini when we compared horrible people to horrible people in the past. It makes you think. I think it makes you wonder. It makes me wonder. Definitely. Um, what else do I have written down? There's no walking around. Oh, you're wearing headphones. Oh, you're trying your best. That's my fiance, she's walking around. She's trying not to be in it. Are you gonna come in and say hello? Nope. Nope, she's not coming in to say hello. I appreciate that. This is what we have to do, because we live together and I have her put headphones on so she can't hear my yammerings. Otherwise, I get very mm, self-conscious. There's also a cat watching me right now. Canelo, not now. Uh, yeah, I don't know. His, his craziness had me thinking of all sorts, because I've one of the big things that I asked Mark this past week, and I opened for Mark Norman, and he and I have worked with each other before, so we're kind of on a friendly situation. I consider him a friend. Uh, and I asked him, I go, man, are you happy? And he's like, man, it's a good question. And he, he said overall yes, but, you know, he still has those those moments where he's like, 
We're just not happy. And that's normal for comedians. Comedians aren't supposed to be happy. That's why we come up with good things. Overall, we're supposed to be kind of unhappy, kind of annoyed, and kind of a, a feeling of left out or inadequate. And that's how we come up with the ha -ha's. I think that's normal. And I think sometimes when comedians, if you lose that along the way, maybe you're not as funny anymore. I'm not speaking for everybody, but that's just my, that's my dumb assertion of the situation. No, I don't know if I used the word assertion correctly, but I'm definitely going to leave it in. Uh, but what I realized is, most, all my comedian friends, no one's happy. And I know comedians that are well below me, that are damn near homeless. And I know comedians that are wildly, wildly successful. And for the most part, same level of, I'm not happy. And it, that part doesn't scare me. What scares me is my regular friends that don't do comedy, that still aren't happy. That's the part that gets me. I'm still friends with a lot of my friends from high school, and they're okay. But for the most part, they're like, I don't, I don't really like my job. I don't really what I, I don't know what I want to do instead. Uh, I, I'm contemplating a kid, or maybe we'll just get another dog. What if we sell the house? Let's just, should we sell the house? Let's get a second house. Maybe I can, it's just, I think I have one friend that seems wildly content and then everyone else just kind of has this moment at 35 where they're just like, is this, I get, is this it? Is it over soon? Just like the Scorsese movie that I mentioned before, is it over relatively soon? Like when do we get to be done with it? And I kind of made the realization that I think humans have, I mean, we've always been top of the food chain, but we've, we're at, we have nothing to worry about. That our biggest worry is to be happy. That's our biggest worry. That's our biggest want. It's like, I want to be happy. Which drugs do I have to take to be happy? What city do I have to live in to be happy? Who do I need to be with to be happy? Which therapists? will direct me to the right pills or the right thing to be happy. Which religion will make me the happiest? That's why a lot of people turn to Buddhism, because they seem to be the only one that, uh, you know, you don't end up fighting in a war. Um, and just this idea that, like, I was thinking 150 years ago, 200 years ago, humans weren't, their number one want wasn't happiness. 200 years ago, people were just trying to survive the winter. Or, or even 100 years ago. People were trying to survive the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl and then World War II and then, and we got nothing. We got nothing. Unless you're some of the people in, uh, unfortunately, in Ukraine or other parts of the world. I know there's, there's something that someone brought up. You know, there's other wars going on in the invasion of Ukraine. Yes, I know, but I don't, but I watch the news and that's not what they're talking about right now. So I know the one that they talk about. And... It's just, it makes me wonder if, if that's like what you need sometimes. Maybe, you, maybe we need a Great Depression or a World War to like understand that the idea of wanting happiness all the time is, is really weird. That just means we have like no enemies. I mean, we're animals in a sense. We're animals, like it, once you're an animal and you're out in the wild, you're always like either looking for food or looking for shelter or safety or, oh, there's an enemy. But we just don't have any of that. I hit a button on my phone and Uber Eats will bring me a very lukewarm cheeseburger at 35 minutes late. You know, I'm going to be sad about it, but I won't be hungry. I'll be mildly annoyed. And then it will circle back to the original thing that I wanted. I'm like, I just want to be happy all the time. What a weird want. What a selfish want. But it's a want where I, that's all that's left. That's all that's left. I don't have a drug problem, so odds are I'll never be homeless. Uh, you know, at the worst case scenario, comedy gets to a level where I might have to like move into a van. You know, and then Emma and I live in a van. And then we're those people. And then it would get a little closer to homelessness. But... But overall, you're like, the, the main goal is just, I want to be happy all the time. Everyone wants to be a dog at a dog park. A level of happiness, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I think that's when 
the world needs to kind of end us when the population's expectancy level for, I don't even know what the word is, just what we want instead of food, shelter, water, it's happiness. It's just, I want to be happy all the time. Am I talking about happiness too much? Because I realize my background is just plants. Plants and green, and I'm wearing like a, a weird t-shirt with Japanese writing on it. Like, it, it seems like I'm trying to sell you guys on Buddhism. But I think that might be where you gotta go. I think that's why people my age end up Buddhists. You're like, he's just like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I think I wasted a lot of years on this one career. And I think I just want to vow a silence and to rake some sand in a, in a, in a sand trap. I don't know if that's what they call it, but it looks like they're raking sand at a golf course. I think that's the ultimate level of like, I think we did it. I think we made it. That's weird. I don't know if that had a point, but I've already said it out loud. Uh, what else happened? I can't breathe signs in rich neighborhoods. Those just feel phony, don't they? How about that transition? Back into the comedy. I, I live, I live in, a, in a nice neighborhood. We rent, we don't own. And then if you go like a few blocks that away, it gets really nice. And I don't think you can rent. You own and you've owned for a while. And it's a very nice neighborhood. And uh, as we're walking through, I saw like a few like I can't breathe signs and then Black Lives Matter signs like nailed into the grass. And for some reason, those in a rich neighborhood just do not feel genuine. They just, they feel like you put them, you're like, huh, is it, and is this okay? Like, we're not gonna, I'll vote, but I'm not gonna take the, do you get what I mean? It just feels phony. It just feels phony. It just feels like a Lamborghini at a trailer park where you're like, that guy doesn't live here, or that thing's stolen, or or that is just some fake plastic wrap and underneath it's a Toyota Corolla. Like, it's, something's wrong. It just feels weird. Just this idea of like, also anytime you hammer a uh, either like a social awareness sign or a political sign into your yard, I wonder if it's just such a, it's, it's, I think it's funny because there has to be a moment where you're hammering it in and your significant other is in the street looking back at it going, it, a little to the left. And then, and then there's just a guy, just a middle-aged guy in a, way, in, a, in a very rich neighborhood with white hair and the good, like, uh, the good jogger pants and the new New Balance shoes next to the Tesla that's charging. And he's shimmying over to the left with the Black Lives Matter sign and a mallet. And he's like, is this good? Is this like we're helping? Yeah, that helps about as much as tweeting a Ukrainian uh, flag emoji during their invasion. I think they need a hand, but it's nice that you're letting us know you're a good person. It just feels that way. I like the idea, I was thinking of just some guy with like, with like a social justice thing, clapping it in, and then at the end just going, that ought to do it. That's going to solve all this social injustice. Did you see my sign? I put in the sign. I think I'm doing my part. I think I'm doing good. It's kind of like someone with an electric car, like, yep, plugged her in. We're doing pretty good. Don't mind the tires. Those are made of rubber. It's a very non-renewable resource. Okay. Uh, what? The batteries are mined from a thing and there's uranium pouring into the drinking water of Kenyans. I just made that up. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, well, don't worry about that because I, I got the Tesla on, uh, on lease. So we're doing pretty solid here. It just, it just feels that way. Or like some dude hammering in a Trump sign and then his wife's like a little to the left. And he's like, it's a Trump sign. He's like, ah, leave it crooked. That's for the best. I don't know. That was a moment I had as we were jogging through the rich neighborhood. Big picks, and eh, that's a little dark. All right, I think that's uh, I think that's it for this week. Thank you so much for listening, downloading, sharing, subscribing, doing whatever you do to listen to the podcast. I hope you enjoy my yammerings. Uh, come come to a show. Go to zoltancomedy.com. See me live. Other than that, ciao. Eh. This week